Okay, so now you are to. No, we're doing one. another one. <laughs> yeah, we're doing another one. Yeah, yeah, but it's been 10 years. <laughs> yeah, so, it's been a while. So a lot has happened. So you are touring Finland yeah. for now. So how's tour been going? Great. Well, well, well we only started last night yeah. in. Riemaki. Yeah. Riemaki. Bar Bulldog, yeah. which was yeah. full. It was, yes, was full. I, I mean, it's it. not a very big place, but it was full and it was enthusiastic. And uh, you know, and and the fact that people are still wanting to come out and 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 hear me do my thing, or effectively on my own, but with you know with a band, you know, to not yeah. with Schenker or not with Engvi or whatever, yeah, yeah, is, is 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 exciting and good. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So and and we and and we had a great. Oh, Sweetie, yes, here it is. Oh, hey. Thank you very much. <laughs> and a spoon. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so, so it was. It was really good. I mean, they really, yeah. they really, really got into it last night. They were really part of the show. They, 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 they were attentive when they needed to be attentive. They clapped and sang along. I mean, it was br yeah. It was brilliant, wasn't it? And really good. Our photographer Han was there last night. So okay. He shot the full full photo gallery for okay. our website probably right. tomorrow already. So okay. Put it up, and he sent me a couple of photos already. Yeah. He said it was packed and yeah. sent me a picture of the set list. Yeah. Know, okay. So I, could say, I wish somebody uh, sent me a picture of the yeah. set list. Jeez. I got it. I got it. Oh <laughs> god. <laughs> so oh. the way I saw it this morning, it's a great cross selection of all the all the major points from your throughout your career there's, there's stuff from all the bands I, yes I was really really happy to see Empire and Cornerstone stuff and yeah these yeah. songs so was that intentional oh yes or, of, yeah. of course yeah. and, and and then of course you get you get some smarty pants who come along and say actually yeah you're not doing anything from your solo album or you're not doing anything from the Paz or you're not doing any Midnight Blue yeah. and you know, so I met. I forgot. You, you know, I, I forgot my. Well, I really <laughs> okay. did. I really did. I really did. Um, but next time round, so I've been doing this set with different musicians from different territories uh, for the last eighteen months, okay. and uh, and 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 so I know that the songs work in a live situation, and 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 I know that. When it comes to doing it next time round, then I'll change it and I will add songs from La Paz, maybe even Midnight Blue, or okay. maybe even uh, the solo album in there, and just broaden it out a bit. I mean, there'll be some things that will need to stay, uh, and there'll be s some different songs, maybe from Cornerstone, or some maybe different songs from uh, yeah. Stranger in Us All, or whatever. Just something, just something different. But at the moment, this is the set list, it's tight, it works, and everybody's yeah. playing great. Yeah, but you have had different musicians and now again a different. Yes. So how does it change uh, when you have different musicians playing? Does it, or is there a difference? Well, you know? well the, the, there's, a, there's a difference when it comes, mm -hmm. there's a difference. What I noticed last night, well, the difference is the interplay between Henrik and Sven. When, yeah. Because the, there's the scope in the songs for them to go off and have fun together, and mm. that's great. You know, that's what these songs are built for. That. Mm. Um, when I've been playing with the Italian chapter of White Noise, it's uh, we can't afford the keyboard player. Ah, okay. So the keyboards are on a computer. So you're so it's very locked. Ah. It's very locked in. If it's two riffs in a tank show, song and I came in after yeah. one, yeah. it's not good because it goes. <laughs> so it goes. But I, yeah. so with the finished chapter of White Noise, even though it's one one show, I I, I could already feel the freedom. Yeah. I could already feel the freedom and the mo and the the way it moves more, yeah. uh, um, because. It can be played at a faster tempo or a slower tempo, and it can it can it can move more than it being when it's done to a click track. Um, but budgets being the way budgets are, yeah, yeah. you know these yeah. great guys in Italy. We've mm -hmm. done we've done probably forty shows together, mm -hmm. and and they're great, and and it works. But it's a diff so it's breathing a different air when you're playing with a band where it's not controlled by a click. 
yeah, yeah. But and the freedom of the other m musicians sort of enveloping you and bringing, you know, they just it just makes it it makes it different. Doesn't make it better. Yeah. Doesn't make it worse. It makes it different. Yeah. Um, and for me, because I'm the only one that's experienced it in every in every way, then I then. It's, I, I, what I found is, to answer your question, is that it's given me more freedom. Yeah, yeah. So how do you feel about the, because there's been a lot of talk about the backing tapes and, you know, if the singers are really singing or enhancing, if it sounds great to an audience, does it matter? Well, I, well you, you see, I, th I wouldn't want, I, the, the keyboards that we use on the backing tapes are because we can't afford the keyboard player and the songs wouldn't, work without one yeah, yeah. you know um, that I don't object to but I think I would object if the guitar players guitar solos were on tape <laughs> or if the sing of or if the singers vocals were yeah. Yeah. you know if you're coming to see Doogie White singing white yeah. noise yeah. you don't <laughs> You don't want to hear me doing it from when I did it three months ago yeah, in a yeah, studio to yeah. sing it. You know, yeah. you don't. You, you. I, I don't agree with that, man. You know, I just don't think. I just don't think that that's that's right. It, it, the es the essence of it must be live. You know, we don't have backing vocals with this band because I won't have backing vocals on tape. Yeah. I won't have a vocal with me um, uh, shadowing what I'm doing. I won't have that. And that might restrict your freedom. It, because because, it, because it would restrict the freedom because, yeah. of course, I, I, I mean, I play with the songs every night um, and, 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 and try different things and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but I have fun doing it. Um, so, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have yeah. uh, vocals or guitars. So imagine, imagine, click. There's a guitar solo. <laughs> oh, that's great. No, no, that's that's wrong. Lip syncing. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's wrong. It's wrong. Yeah, it's yeah. wrong. It's wrong. Well, you so, do it in the pop world if you like. Don't yeah. don't, don't bring don't bring it to the world of heavy rock. Yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. So you're singing a lot of songs done by classic artists like you know Rainbow Rainbow stuff and and, and UFO and Scorpions no, no. with the man. No, oh, not on this Schenker. show, but with the, with the Michael Schenker Temple of Rock and stuff like that you've been singing so yes uh, so what is your approach in seeing these classic songs do you do you sing them as close to the originals as you can or do you put your own stamp to it always try to well there is there, there is a I mean there's there obviously is a style to those mm. tunes um, and, a, a, and and Phil Phil Mogg has got such a unique voice yeah exactly it's a bit like Frank Sinatra, mm -hmm. that it's it's very difficult to get that unless you are him, mm -hmm. you know, and and so I can't do it like Phil does it with his timing and with his uh, the notes that he has because that's unique to him. So I just have to go start. That's the blueprint. But then find my own way. Exactly. You know, yeah. if yeah. if if you want to hear Phil Mogg singing those songs, mm -hmm. go and see UFO. You know, yeah, because I because I can't. I'm not Phil Mogg. I will never be Phil Mogg, and I can't do what he does mm -hmm. because what he does is brilliant. Mm -hmm. So I so I have, to, as I've always done, from any band that I've been in, you look at the br blueprint of what the singer is doing, and then. Do your own thing, because if you're just copying it, I mean, if you, if I go and listen to Stranger in the Night mm. and just sing it exactly like Phil Mogg, what's the point in that? Mm. Exactly. You know, if I go and listen to Made in Japan and I sing it just like Gillen, what's the point in that? Because then you just become a cover band or a cover singer, then you just become a karaoke singer, and. I feel that I'm a bit more than that. So like, yeah, you, you know, I, so I like so I like to go and have fun. And sometimes you reach for things and it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, sometimes you reach it and it's and it's that brief second of brilliance. You know, and you try and find the balance in between. You know, I, 
Wait till you, wait till you this. You'll like this as well, right? <laughs> Robert Plant yeah. told me, hang on, that, that was just dropped that name there. Um, Robert Plant, I said to him, how do you, you know, when you're going out and you're doing these long tours, how do you, um, you know, how do you keep your, your voice? How do you get those notes? He says, well, if I can't hit that one, I just find another one. <laughs> and that's what it's been for me. If I can't get that one, there's another one there that'll do just exactly the same thing. Yeah. Mm. You know? Yeah. And, and, and and that's it. You you have to yeah. you have to be able to weave whatever magic you have into the songs and nail it. Mm. Exactly. And you know a lot of people now criticize because everything's on YouTube and people are constantly looking at it and they're, yeah, they're from their own couches and stuff sure. like that and they say, oh, he's not hitting the note he hit 40 years ago. Yeah. Go figure. <laughs> yeah. But he's going around it and it always when you are watching the gig live, it's a different experience. Exactly. It's not the you, know, the, 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 you know, everybody with their camera phone, excuse me, can you put your camera phone down? You're blocking my view you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with my, of my camera, you yeah. know. Yeah. I don't, they don't give a good representation. I mean, they will, they will tell you when the singer's a mile out of tune, right? Mm. They will tell you when the guitarist is not playing the right notes. Yeah. They will tell you when the drummer collapses and you know mm. and and loses time, mm. but they won't give you the feeling. Mm. You know, it's the difference between making love and watching porn. Yeah. Mm. You know, the end result is the same, mm. but the the the, the um, the vibe of being there yeah, exactly. overwhelms all the other stuff, and you get these armchair critics that go, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good example because Rainbow played here a week ago. Yeah, uh -huh. they did a show here. Yeah. Uh, I was there. I thought it was great. You know, I I heard that some of the notes weren't the same as they used to be, uh -huh. obviously, mm -hmm. but the atmosphere in the hall I felt was excellent. Yeah, and you know, it was sold out. Yep. You know, thirty thousand or whatever it was. Yeah. Yep. a big, big crowd. Fantastic. Anyway. And uh, you know, then Richie refused to do an encore. <laughs> Just you know, walked off. <laughs> well, what I heard, but, what I heard, but, was but, that that um, they had run out of time. Yeah, they ran so, out of time. So but, it made the stories better yeah. if he refused to have a, if he had a hissy fit mm. and, and and stormed off because of this that the next thing, you know. That's a better headline than actually they overran their time because he yeah. was playing his guitar yeah. solos a bit longer than usual. Yeah, yeah. You know, an extra song. You know, yeah. there you go. Yeah. So, yeah. The, yeah. so, you know, I don't buy that any yeah. either. And also people were saying, you know, oh, it sounds like crap and, you know, watching from the YouTube and stuff like that. But they weren't there. Yes. Yes. I thought it was an excellent show. It yeah. was two hours of magic and, yeah. you know. there you go. Yeah. It was, that's great. They're still doing it. Yeah, you know. that's, that, I mean, that, that's all you can, that's mm. all you can ask for, you know. and. You know, and some people, you know, if you're under the age of 35, you probably never saw Rainbow. Mm. You probably never saw Richie on a stage doing the big <laughs> rock. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, so why not? Yeah. You know, why not go? Why not go and 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 and, and enjoy it and feast on it yeah. while he's here, yeah. while he's still, while yeah, he's got the, the while he still wants to get up there and deliver. Mm. Why not just go and see it? Accept it for what it is, mm. enjoy it. You know, you're getting to hear songs, you know, that he hasn't played since 1980. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, Stargazer, I think the last time he played that was probably, you know, 81 with Joe Lynn. Probably. You know, so, you know, you're getting to hear, you're getting to hear that. You know, Ronnie's, Ronnie's, Ronnie's delivering every night. Mm. You know, Jens Johansson is a fantastic keyboard player. I mean, they, they don't, they don't come much better than him. You know, I mean, he's great. And, you know, and then, and, and you've got Richie. You know, and you know, he maybe doesn't have that danger or that edge that he that he that he had, on or stage-wise. You know, yes. but you still you still set with anticipation, going, "Come on!" Oh. And the sound is still there. Yeah, yeah. The sound is still there. It's the same, okay, that's same great. Sound. Same great. Sound. Not all the notes are right, but the same sound. I'm yeah. very pleased. So, so that was great. That's and pleasing. Actually, the last time he was in Helsinki was with you. Yeah. In, House of in, Culture. In, right? Yeah, in, in September or October, '95. Yeah. That was the first gig of the tour. Yeah, actually. it was. Yeah. It was a great gig. I, I remember yeah. it well. Yeah. I remember it well. So now, it was now. the only time we played Stand and Fight. Ah, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Only time. Yeah. yeah. But let's not get lost in Richie Blackmore stories. There's a lot <laughs> yeah, more to talk about. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Well, and you also played with Jungby Malmsteen and you played with Michael Schenker, who you are still playing with, yes. I think. And you just yeah. had an album called Resurrection. Album. Yes. Yeah. So how was the experience recording that one? Well, I've, I mean, I've been working with Michael for a while mm. and um, we did two albums, two DVDs, and we toured the world about three or four times in that five year period. And uh, it was really time for us to take a break uh, because the audiences were would need a break, the promoters needed a break, and we kind of needed a little break because it was still it was still based on we'd done two albums, we were starting to build our own collection of songs, but I was still singing Gary Graham Phil songs. Yeah. So. Michael decided to do the Schenker Fest and get the original vocals vocalists together to do this and then at the end have a selection of the UFO songs sung by these respective vocalists which were Gary, Graham and, and Robin and, they, and they, they did festivals in Japan and different things and then he called me up and asked me if I would be interested in doing an album with him as the Schenker Fest with these other uh, singers. And I said, That'll be a, that's a great idea, let's, let's see what we do. So he sent me half a dozen songs, which I then I started writing. And, and I sent him ideas back. And uh, he phoned me up and said, uh, you can only pick three. There are other singers here, you know. And I said, right, okay. So I picked the three that I thought that I could work best with. And um, which were the girl with the stars in her eyes, take me to the church and anchors away, and um, and then I flew into to Vossi's studio in Germany and laid the vocals down over uh, a day and a half or two days or whatever, and did backing vocals and other people's songs, and you know we had a whole we just had fun. I mean it's great fun just to be doing it, and 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 to work and and, and to work with uh, uh, these great players, you know. You have, you have Chris and Ted who have been together since I think I think dinosaurs were roaming the earth when Chris and Ted <laughs> were, were playing together I mean they're, they're so tight you know and and they, and and they read each other so well you know they're just a look and and off it goes they know exactly what they're doing and Steve Mann's another one another great find in that Wayne Finley mold where he can do great vocals great guitar and great keyboards you know and, and that all works for us as well. You know, and then and then I've known Graham for a few years now. We've been we've become good friends, and uh, Gary and Robin I didn't really know, but we we all got on well. And as the new boy in class, I was made very welcome by everybody. You know, so because you're always nervous stepping into someone else's. You know, that's a party that had been going on for nearly two years, and then all of a sudden I was coming in. As you know, guy, as the new guy, is the cheeky upstart again. <laughs> Even though I'm nearly, I'm 58, you know, but I'm still the, the cheeky Rookie. upstart, you know, coming in and... Graham turned 70, I yeah. think, actually. Yeah, you know, yeah. and he's nailing it every night. I mean, he's yeah. up there. And I've never known how he does it, because you mm. say, you know, because it's like... Wow. And, he, and, and you think, no, he's never going to hit that note. And then, oh, we got it. <laughs> yes. Because, because, I mean, I remember watching Tina Turner do a similar thing. She was doing, yeah, since, since we've been together, loving you forever, forever, times are good. And, she, and you knew the note that she was going to go for, mm. right? And, and I was sitting going, and she hit it and I went, oh. <laughs> you know, because you just, because you just like, oh, that's beyond. No, you did it. So Sam Graham, you think, how is he going to get this? No, because you you can't even hear it in your mind, you know. And then all of a sudden he hits it. And you're like, wow, that's some that's special. That's why you're still doing this, you know, all these years later, you know, and delivering every night. And people are excited to go and see him. And people. And and, and and people are excited to see Gary up doing his songs, you know, which were written in 1980, you know, yeah, and, and you know, and he's and he's out there delivering because he's got such a great voice, Gary Barden, you know, it's just it's this rounded, soulful, and a vibrato. I, I, 
and it's and, and the same with Macaulay I mean Macaulay delivers every night mm. you know he's just bang 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 and so I'm learning so much from watching and listening to these guys every night which is something I would never have done mm. you know so, and, it's, and it's glorious I'm having a great time and Michael's at the top of his game I mean he's just playing his yeah. ass off it's just absolutely yeah. brilliant. And it seems I was just was watching yesterday the Spirit on a mission DVD. All Madrid, right, Madrid yeah. show, which was an older one, but yeah. and also the Resurrection DVD, which was a making of. Yeah. And it seems like you are having such fun time and great chemistry fun. is great, even though there are a lot of stars. There's no egos or no, anything no. like that. No, there's no. It's fun. I think <laughs> no one's competing for anything. You know, we just want to go and be the best we can be. You know. There'll always be friendly competition between the singers, you know, but not in a way that detracts from the performance. Exactly. But it only enhances. You know, I'm the last on. Gary goes out there. Gary's Gary goes out there. So that seems like the most difficult job because he's the he's got to go out there and get them all going, right? Mm. I'm the last guy on, which might seem like the most difficult job because these guys have just delivered three brilliant vocal performances. So the but we're pushing each other all the time to make the show better because you think, bloody hell, Bonnet was brilliant tonight. Right, I better get in there. And, <laughs> and, you, and you go out there. But you're very much part of a, it's like a wee gang. You know, I've never shared the stage with singers before. I find, I've always found that very awkward. Mm. I, joined a, I joined a club band um, in my lean years between Ingve and some, or maybe between Richie and Ingve, I was. I joined yeah. a club band and they had a female singer, and I did the guy stuff and she did the girl stuff, and then we had to do duets together, and I just found the whole thing really creepy. You know, just you know, you're singing Michael McDonald on my own once again, and 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 you know, and you've got to stare into their eyes, and you're thinking this is a bit weird. I, I don't like that. I don't like cabaret. I don't like that kind of thing. But what the Schenker Fest is bringing in is, 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 is rock theatre without the the props. Yeah, you know, see. we're coming on and we're, we're de, you know, we're delivering this. And I'm backing Graham and I'm backing Robin and I'm backing Gary. And we're all backing each other. And it, there's just something magical about that. You know, Works. and everybody's supporting everybody, and it's just. I wake up in the morning. And I haven't done it for a long, long, long time, but I woke up a couple of times in the bus laughing, just how great this is, and what a lucky wee Scotsman I am to be doing this. You know, thirty years later or whatever it is, and to still be enjoying it, and to be playing with such great musicians, and and. And audiences that are coming in and appreciating it, yeah. you know, they, because they really took to it in America. You know, I've done maybe seven or eight American tours, and this, by a country mile, was the best one. Yeah, I mean, it was just, there was just something magical about it. Just the whole way that it worked. Everybody was just, we were all on the same page. You know, there, you weren't worrying, there was no ego like there was with and there was no worrying about the Sword of Damocles like there was with. This was just everybody all working together for the yeah. one thing, and that was to deliver that night the best show possible. Yeah. yeah. So what are your touring plans for the future? What's coming next? Well, I have, I have White Noise finished chapter with, with Henrik and, and the good lads from mm. um, Finland. Then I go to Sweden for one day and I do the Michael Schenker Fest with Michael and the lads over there. Then I come back and I have two weeks off and I go to Argentina and I do oh, White Noise, <laughs> the Argentine chapter, or well, the Buenos Aires chapter, I don't quite know what we're going to be yet. Same set, different musicians, so it means getting in, getting a different, getting that okay. Latin okay. swing on it as yeah. opposed yeah. to the Scandinavian swing. So it'll be different again. Um, and then I've got some shows in Bulgaria, I've got some shows in... And then I go, and then we start in August again with the Schenker Fest in Japan. Uh, uh, and, and Europe, and the UK, 
da, 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 and then I'm back to South America in December, and then I'm home in time for Christmas. Full year ahead. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Hard and it's, work. it's yeah, well, it's when it becomes hard work, you tend not to want to do it. You know. Yeah. yeah. It, it's the traveling. That, it's the traveling that's the killer. You yeah. know. That's the. That's the. That's the the thing that really sitting around in airports, exactly. sitting around blah blah blah. It's all that, you know, the, and you've just got to get your head in the space that it's that ninety minutes on the stage. That's all that matters. Everything else is by the wayside. You know, you just get on that stage in that ninety minutes. You focus all your energies and giving that person, that person, and that person the best night. That they have. There are more than that person, that person, that person come to the show, <laughs> but, yeah. exactly. but you have to, you just have to just yeah, focus. get it to the back of the hall and get people involved and, and last night they got involved and I'm sure that tonight they'll get involved because what I'm trying to do is, is we're, we're playing a rock and roll show but what I'm trying to do is, is to give them a little bit about what this, you know, why am I playing this tank song? What's the story behind this? And I mean, not that I'm going into an American style rant and speech about this, but here's a funny anecdote about this tank song. Because they fired me, you know. Or here's this song that um, "Singing Alone" is one of the tunes that we do. Uh, it was on the it's on the Cornerstone album here, yeah. right? Now I wrote that in Estuberg after the last Rainbow Show when I quit the band, all right? And I went down to the stage and I said to Richie's roadie, I said, can I just borrow his guitar for five minutes? Well, I showed him probably, because he didn't know I'd quit the band, right? So I got Richie's guitar and I sat down and I got a pick and I sat and I played the three or four chords that I know and I wrote that song. Yeah. And, it, and I gave it to Steen and Steen did that with it. Mm. What we've done is we've stripped it back now to how it originally was. And it's just Henrik and I doing it together and so I tell the audience that little story and they go oh and so they listen a bit more closely yeah. you know and and so you're so you're bringing people in and you're making them feel part of it rather than just go bang 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 which bang. you can do when it's a bigger place yeah. but these are intimate little shows you know yeah. Yeah. you know I have more people at my my birthday parties yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm sure Ronnie Romero has a bigger guest list <laughs> than, you know but that's just yeah. how it is yeah. that's how it is but these good people have come yeah. to yeah. see and hear what I do yeah. you know and hear those songs so if they can get a little bit, bit of background for it they're getting something that nobody else knows yeah, yeah. something extra yeah. something, something extra yeah. you know yeah. just for you this is just for you here it is. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned this cornerstone, and this is actually one of my favorite favorite albums right. that you've done. Yeah. And also this one that followed it. Okay. Really liked it. And were there other songs as well written for the next Rainbow album? I think I um, heard some. Or was it just the singing alone? No. Had, n well, singing alone the wasn't for the rain, wasn't for the Rainbow album. No, no, but the other. The, other Future ones. Rising was. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, honestly, I can't remember now. But there was there was. Um, Forever Young, I think, maybe was. There was, yeah. I, gave, I gave Richie a tape, I think, with four or five different, maybe five or six songs on it. Yeah. You know, just badly played with me and badly sung with me um, uh, for it. Because we had talked about doing another record. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> um, so that's why I took him the tape, you know. Yeah. But, um, but it wasn't to be, so I just took them and I gave them to Steen. And Steen... Steen took whatever it was that I had and, and, and made something magical out of it uh, because it was just very rough, you know. Um, so I don't really remember now. I mean, it's, we're going back, yeah, back a long yeah. way. Yeah, this was a great band and great. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah. good. It was very and good. This one had a song called Some Have Dreams, which Some I really liked. Some Have Dreams. That was one of my favorite, maybe the fa best song. That well, there's an acoustic I version of that somewhere yeah. Um, yeah. that I did. Um, with Alex Dixon, uh, who was the guitar player in Midnight Blue, yeah, and he we did some 
of Dreams as an acoustic thing. And I think I gave it to Andrew McNeish at melodicrock.com and he put it on one of his samplers. I think that's where, I think that's where that went. That was uh, a great song. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good tune. Really you know, and then I don't know, I can't say, is it on here? Judgment Day. Well, Judgment Day, that was one of the songs that I yeah. sent to, that That's I put on the tape for. Well. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but I gave mm -hmm. to Richie. Oh, really? Uh, uh, and, and I'd forgotten about it until we came to do the Tank album. And, and, and I'd sat with Mick Tucker and came around and I said, look, here's how it goes. Diddly, 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 diddly. And he went, diddly, 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 diddly. And, we, and, we, mm. and we did that, you know, so that's where that, that, that could have okay. been a that could have been a rainbow song, but it was tank top. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was tank top. Do you have a lot of those songs still sitting around that you maybe demoed a lot of times? Oh, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got more song. I've got more songs that I can't really think about. But you, because you always think that you'll use them somewhere, and then you yeah, forget exactly. about you forget about yeah. them, and you know, the take me to the church for the um, yeah, on the Schenken album. Well, that well. That, well I've had that chorus for a long time. Yeah, it's a different sound. But it song. just, yeah, but it yeah. just, but it just worked in the context of that tune. You know, it's just the chorus. You find all. So I had the chorus, and then I added the verse in, and it, and it blended together beautifully. Yeah. You know. And it's a different sounding song to anything else that's on the album. Yeah. So it sticks out. Yeah. Positively. Like, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. So I was wondering if it was written originally for something else. Well, just the chorus, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, just the just the melody and the, and 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 the the lyrics for the chorus were mm. were there. And sometimes mm. you go, oh, that will work, mm. and you put it in. Um, and sometimes stuff will just sit there for forever and never be used, mm. you know. Yeah. Because I, because I, I I don't approach it by going, oh, what have I got here that will fit on this? Mm. I always approach a new song as a new song. Yeah. And then. You're, maybe, you're singing along, la 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 la, take me to the church. You go, oh, that. Oh, I could put that in. You know, and, it'll, and, it, and it works. Yeah. yeah. You know. So, it's, yeah. Okay. so the cornerstone, I think I asked you 10 years ago, will there ever be another album? Tell me no. <laughs> no, <laughs> so well, that's still it's, the case. It's, well, it's still, it's still very much the case of. of yeah. But Steve and I have written three songs together okay. over the last sort of three years. Um, just for because he asked me to. I mean, I, okay. there was a couple of record companies approached Steen about um, perhaps doing a Cornerstone album, and uh, he said to me, "Do you think it would be a good idea?" And I thought, "Yeah, I think that'll be a, I think that'll be a good idea." But then the record companies wanted too much control, and they wanted to hear the demos of the songs, and they want to hear this, and they want to hear that, and hear the next thing. It was like. Just let's no. put the brakes in that one. Was, you know, uh, it wasn't my bag. You know, but okay. no, demons, but demons, 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 I, demons, I are, are, are a deep purple tribute band. Yeah, yeah. And I got a phone call from on a Sunday morning at eight thirty in the morning, and that's never a good thing. <laughs> yeah. It normally means someone's died. And um, so I answered it, and it was Andre, the drummer from Demon's Eye, and he said, look, do you know any Deep Purple Mark uh, 3 and 4 songs? And I said, I do. He said, if I get you a ticket, can you fly in? Uh, we've got a show tonight, and we were supposed to be doing it with Glenn Hughes, but Glenn's pulled out. Mm, okay. And I said, okay. So they flew me in, and uh, we played for two and a half hours unrehearsed. Just straight, just straight through yeah. because, because yeah. It, it, it's, it was it's old shoes for me. You know, I mean, I know I grew up with it. Mm. You know, from awesome. when I was 15. You know, some of the songs I had never sung, but I knew them. Anyway, and, we, and it worked. And so we started. So then we just started doing uh, occasional shows. You know, we maybe put a run of four or five shows together twice a year, and I would go out and I would play with them, and we'd mm. play Deep Purple, we'd play Rainbow, mm. and we would do it, and we'd do it. And then they said, "We're going to do an album. Do you fancy singing it?" writing it and yeah. singing it so we we um this was the first that one. was yeah. the first one and, yeah. and and so they sent me the material over and of course it felt and had the the essence of a purple or a rainbow yeah, album it sounds about like it that. a lot like that yeah. so it was just like ping okay let's do it and 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 some of the songs work better than others there's a there, there are some great songs on the album it, it was it was well done uh, it was well received and uh, yeah, the first one is and really, then, really and, great. And then we, then we did a, yeah, 
the unknown stranger. Yeah. I like that one. Sins of the Father. And that yeah. one too. Yeah, Foolish Man, Far Over the Rainbow. You know, there was there was some there was some great stuff on it. And yeah. and, and, and then they decided they would do another one. So we did another one together. Under the neon. Yeah. Under the neon. Yeah. And um, and I'm doing I'm doing two songs, I think from Under the Neon tonight. Ah, so that one is included yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, five Knuckle Shuffle and I don't remember what the first one's called. Um, I'll check the set. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so do, so do that because the because they're exciting live songs and for anybody that's coming to see me, they'll sound familiar they're, because they've got that familiarity about. Them, yeah. You know, and and, and that kind of rainbow purple esque kind of way. But there's still songs that I wrote, yeah. you know, and, and, and that was important to me not to go out and, 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 and do cover versions, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, be, I'm beyond that now, really. Yeah. And, 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 and that goes back to what, what Michael Schenker said to me was, you know, you're singing Gary Barden songs, you're singing Graham Bonnet songs, you're, you're singing Phil Mogg songs, you're singing Klaus Minor songs, you know. We should really just be doing your songs, you know, mm. plus a couple of classics. So that's when he put the fest together was to get all these original mm. guys in to sing their songs. Yeah. So I get to sing half a dozen Templar rock songs, which is great because they stand alongside yeah, the great the Bonnet songs, the great Barton songs, and the great Macaulay songs. Yeah, I thought the songs like Live and Let Live and yeah. Fun. With the Wild Winds Blow and, and yeah. these songs, they were great. Yeah, great you know, tunes, really great great tunes. Or, uh, Horizons was the one. Really? really? Yeah, that was okay. the one. Right. You played that when in Virgin Oil, when I yeah. saw you with the Temple of yeah. 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 Horizons. You said, this is not Lost Horizons, this no, is no, Horizons. No, no, this is Horizons. <laughs> yeah. Different song. Yeah. 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 Remember that one. It's a good one too. He doesn't play Lost Horizons, it's strange. It's a bit like mm. Ingvi not playing Heaven Tonight, or it's a bit like Richie not playing Stargazer. Why don't you play Lost Horizons? I don't know. Just doesn't want to Rich, do it. Richie, Just doesn't want to do it. Richie played Street of Dreams yesterday in Prague. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just saw the new set list. He, he pulled right. that in. Okay. Which is his favorite song, I think, from Rainbow. Or at least that Rainbow. We got. <laughs> well, when we went to Japan, uh, he's, he said, right, well, right, we've got to do Stone Cold and Street of Dreams, and everybody's like, huh? Mm. We've never yeah. done those. Mm. So one of the, his assistant went out and bought, bought a CD and gave us all a copy of the CD. So we had to learn it in the morning, and do it at sound check, and then play it that night. So yeah. that was, you know, uh -huh. so that was, you know. Yeah. So that was that was funny. Yeah. But anyway, um, so yes, so that that's yeah. that. So, uh, will you be doing another one with that demon side? I don't know. Any if plans? they ask, if yeah. they ask, there, there aren't any plans. But I mean, if they ask, I'm always mm. up for it because they're great players, and we do shows. We did we did uh, six shows earlier on this year. I've got another three or four to do with them in October, I think. Okay, that's coming. Uh, that's coming up as well. That's another one of the things that I'm doing. Um, and they're a great bunch of guys, you know, and we have such a laugh. Mm. And, 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 and they understand the music so well, and they play it so beautifully. And, and you know, I mean, it's cover versions, but it's not bang. You know, yeah. they, they, they can go off in tangents and go away somewhere and come back, you know, which is, you know, you know the, you know the beginning of the song, mm. you know how the song ends, yeah, and you know how to get from A to see twisting through B and they can do that and that's great and that's what I love because that's the that's the way that I learned my musical trade was to was to know the beginning of the song the end of the song and anything else that happens in the middle is being controlled by the musical director usually the guitar and that's great I love it yeah so how about this Empire and then there's La Paz which actually you know, yeah. the album is included any plans yeah. to work with with Empire La Paz? no well the em the Empire that was that was great because I replaced Tony Martin in that because Tony didn't exactly. want to do it anymore. Yeah. yeah. And and again I said to Monk, I said, well listen, I'll do shows with you, but we need to do an album. And he said, right, okay, we'll do an album. Hmm. So we we sat down and we wrote the album and recorded it, and and, and I think it's a great album. I think there's some this, great songs. This is in a it. great, probably the best song. And you're playing Messiah. this one too. Yeah, doing that doing that tonight. Manic Messiah. Yeah. There's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a great it's a great album. I really I really liked it. I really liked it. I must. I, 
I haven't heard it for a, for a long time because I don't tend to listen to um, albums that I do. Can't stand the Never. sound of my voice. Never. No, well, I, ah, if I have to learn, if I have to learn the songs, then I will. You know, I give them always a cursory lesson. Mm. If you know, just mm. to see that you know what yeah. I would have done yeah. differently. Yeah. But then, you, but then I don't. I don't. You know, I, I just don't. And um, and then if I have to learn songs. Then I learn them. I mean, uh, somebody was talking to me the other day about uh, Unleash the Fury, and they're going on this song, and I'm like, Never heard oh, I don't even, remember. I don't, don't even remember it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because you're just in the studio and you just do them that one, two, three, four times, you, you sing it, and then it's, you never hear it again until it's mixed, and then you listen to it and you think, I don't have to listen to that yeah. anymore. Yeah. You know. and, and speaking of Unleash the Fury, I also saw you with Yngwie in, in the House of Culture in, yes. in 2006. And that was that was a uh, it was there were some good moments in the show, but I was fear because you disappeared from the stage so many times, and you know oh, Yngwie was just dabbling. You all know, the time. All so the time. I think it sort of like wasted you as a singer. I, that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah. So but, it's just, but it was very much the Yngwie Malmsteen show. Yeah. You know, he, as he said to me, he said, "Look, my name. And people come to see me was, play." Parted as friends. Mm. You know, I mean, I never had, I never had any, a, any angst with Ingvi at all. Mm. You know, I, I, I liked him as a guy. I mean, we, I thought he was, I thought he was great fun. I thought he was mm. very funny. Mm. Um, and we always got on really well. And then, you, you know, you just, it just runs its course. It's like any other yeah, relationship. Exactly. You know, mm. it just runs its course. And there's no point in hanging in there too long. Mm. And, and when it was done, it was done. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen him a few times since then, and we've always got on really well. So no blood, bad blood, no, 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 not at all. No, no, no. Yeah. And it, and it, and he seems to have two singers for two albums, and then switching singers. I've seen that. Yeah. It's just, well, it know. might be. I mean, I don't really know much about. I don't really know much about him apart from the Joel and Turner album, which I like very much. But I don't yeah, know. I just, uh, I, you know, I don't know anything else. I, you know, I know, I know. People talk about facing the animal, but I've never heard it. That's a great album. You know, uh, you know, marching out. I don't know trilogy. I think I had to sing some songs from that, but I don't really know. You know, but I made good friends in Jeff Scott Soto and Mark Holes along the way. You know, which was nice. And Joe, obviously, I've known for years. You know, so so we all got on well. Yeah. So how do you view the musical climate now? As opposed to when you were starting out, touring the world and making records, what's the, is there? What is the main difference? Do you think? Well, I don't. Th- I, I don't think people value. I don't think people mm. value um, music mm. in its physical form as yeah. much mm. anymore. Mm. You know, when I remember having to save up a month's work of pocket money, mm. you know, from cleaning my dad's car and weeding the driveway and doing these things, mm. to be able to go and buy the man who sold the world, you know, it was, you know, it was £2.99, so I had to save yeah. money to get that. Was that your first album that was you first bought? Al- that was, that was first album. I was going to ask, yeah, yeah that, that was one. the first yeah. album I bought, was, was uh, the man who sold the world, mm. because I thought that, I didn't, I was young, I didn't realise that, I, I saw Starman, on, mm. on uh, top of the pops, and I thought, all right. And I went out and it was like, there's a David Bowie album. Mm. Bought it, took it home. No star man. Mm. How can that be? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to. Then I had to save money again mm. to mm. go, and I went yeah. out and I bought Hunky Dory. Mm. <laughs> no star man, but but you digested that because it was the only record you had. Mm. You know, I only had. Uh, the man who sold the world. So I played it for a month till I could buy my next one. And you digested it and you listened to every single, every single nuance, every single note, and note back to front. All of it. Same with all the, all those early albums that you bought. People would just go out and buy an album now, or Spotify it and they go, nah. They don't invest any time in it anymore. Yeah, yeah um, it's easy. It's, it's, it's so easy. Mm. And that's why exactly. ticket prices are so high, because mm. you don't get the backing of the record companies. That, that there's not the money coming in anymore from record sales or from publishing or from anything. Um, mm. And so people have kind of made a rod for their own back. I mean, it's, it's I find it weird. 
that people will go and spend 40 euros buying a, a t-shirt, but they won't spend 10 or 15 euros Probably buying an album. album. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that doesn't compute with me, mm. you know, because a t-shirt, just walk around in it and people go, oh, you got a Doro t-shirt on. Yeah. You know, whereas you get an album, you can invest yourself in it and you mm. can read the lyrics and you can mm. look at the sleeve, you know, whereas now they just physically download it and they, they get none of the background information, which is, I always find really exciting. Yeah. I wonder if it changed when it went from vinyl to DVD, uh, CD. I wonder if that's when it when it went from 12 inches. Because what I would have done, if I'd been the record companies, what I would have done when it went to CDs, mm. I would have still delivered in, a, in, a, in an album package. So yeah. you would have opened it up like a, a gatefold sleeve yeah. thing. Yeah. You would have the CD in the middle, but you would have still had all the information and that great artwork. Yeah, you yeah, know, that's you part look of it. at the yeah. artwork mm. on the new Schenker album, Schenker mm. Fest album, mm. and it's tiny on the CD, but somebody brings the album in, and you see it, and you see the, the detail in there, mm. and and it's it's much more to look yeah. at. It's a and substantial I product. Actually, have the box version, which is the CD, but it includes the DVD as right. well, which is the almost an LP. You got the size. book, thing. yeah, book with the yeah. book. Yeah, yeah, isn't that great? Yeah, that's great. It's great photos, and you've never seen anything for. like it. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that. Yeah. So next summer football championships. Are you following football? Not really. We were Not talking about this sport. coming down in the van. Coming down in the van. I don't. Mm. I, I kind of stopped Formula One and football maybe three, four years ago. I, I just, it just, it just went out the window. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I don't know why. I just kind of lost. I kind of lost interest in it. You know, I don't. I, 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 I stopped playing about. Eight years ago, I, I snapped my Achilles tendon. Uh, that was when you were supposed to play in Finland. That's because right. I remember in Järvenpää, I, I had a ticket for the yeah. show, and, and you I broke your foot. I snapped my yeah, Achilles yeah, tendon yeah. when I was playing, yeah. and that that kind of killed that off. <coughs> and that put me out. That put me out of business for about three, four months because I couldn't mm. travel, I couldn't oh, fly, I couldn't really? do it. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was a bit of a disaster. So I've never played football since then, and again, I've just lost interest even watching the highlights. I don't. Doesn't cross my radar anymore. And Formula, same thing. Formula, and one. Formula yeah. one, yeah. yeah. That, just lost. I lost interest in that as well. Yeah, one else. I yeah. will. Yeah. Yeah. So the last question: You yes. have worked with some legendary musicians. Sure. Anyone you would still like to work that you haven't? If you could pick anyone. Well, I always thought yeah. that it, I always thought that it would be fun to work with Tony Iommi. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, but that that won't happen now, you know. Uh, mm. But I was saying earlier on, um, when he phoned me up, uh, oh, just bef before the Heaven and Hell album, mm. before the he Heaven and Hell band album. Mm. What was the album? Bible Black. Is that? No, uh, that was the, it. Was the Devil You Know? The Devil You Know. Bible right, Black that, was that the album. first song. So the telephone <laughs> went and I picked it up, and I said hello, and they said hello. Can I speak to Dougie White? I said speaking. Said, this is Tony Iommi, <laughs> right? But what I should have said. Was how can I help you, Tony? Mm. No, nope. what I said, what I said, he, he said, uh, what are you doing? And I said, I'm just packing my bags. I'm going on tour for two months with Ingrid Malmsteen. And he went, oh, i was just I'm writing these songs, and I don't know whether to give them to Ronnie or to Ozzy, or <laughs> or to give them to someone else. And so it clearly it went to Ronnie, obviously, to do the heavy yeah. hell thing. Um, I think Joran Land recorded a few of them, but that's that, that was not one of my smartest moves. I should have just said, "What do you need? What would you like? What would, what would you like from me, Tony?" But I didn't, mm. and, and I met him after that, and he went, and I went, you know, "Sorry, so, so, yeah." <laughs> so but, that. So, so I would, have, I would, have, I thought, I think that would have been good because I mean the work that he did with. With Ozzy and the work that he did with Ronnie and Tony Martin, it's just blinding stuff. I mean, that, and that uh, Seventh Star album that he did with Glenn, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah, that's good stuff. You underrated know, stuff. Uh, yeah. Under underrated. People don't. Uh, but, but 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 magical. So would I quite like to have done that? But I don't go looking for anything. You know, these. Mm. They've, I, I only went looking. I went looking for for Richie, uh, really. But I don't look for anything else. You know, I. I'm, I'm very happy working with, with Schenker, mm. and mm. you know, 
if and when that comes to an end, then something else will come along. And if it doesn't, yeah. then I'll bumble along, mm. you know. Um, but I'm having such a good time with Michael. Personally and musically, you know, on stage, writing, recording, oh, it's just, it's a breath of fresh air, you know, to just, to be doing it for the love of doing it, without any background noise, because there's always background noise, there's yeah. always someone sitting, me, 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 in the background, there's always that. Not with Michael. Michael's very upfront. Here's what it is. We're going to do an album. There's going to be 12 songs. Would you like to write them? And I go, yes. I go, off you go then. And that's clear. And that's clear. That and then clear. they come back and you go, well, mm. I don't like that bit. And I'll go, can you change it? And they go, yeah, I'll change that bit. And we change it. Mm. You know, but there's nobody sitting going, me, 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 mm. in the background. As there has been in other, in, in, in other yeah. situations I've been in. Um, uh, and we only speak to each other when we want to, mm. you know, or when we need to. You know, he travels separately from everybody else, so I see him mm. at Soundcheck and I see him at the gig and I see him after the show. Mm. That's it. Mm. We don't go for dinner together, mm. you know, we don't hang out, we don't, mm. you know. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a sociable guy, but I don't socialise. I mean, I don't go to rock bars, you know, and I don't hang around and I don't need, mm. you know, I don't go for dinner. Everybody, let's go for dinner. Oh, you know, it just makes me, no, I don't want to mm. do that. You know, I, I just, I enjoy my own space because your own space when you're on tour yeah, is exactly. very, very few and far between. Yeah. Because you've got so many people around you, and, yeah, all the time. and if and I don't mind it if people are not expecting anything of me, you know. I mean, I'm quite happy to sit with the crew guys and let them just do their thing because nobody wants anything, you know, and nobody's expecting anything. Um, so that's fine. But I, I just like I, I just like to be on my own. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I just, I just like to be alone. You know, I just, yeah. I wander yeah. around on my own. You know, I, 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 you know, the guys go down and they get themselves yeah. all organised. Then I'll wander down you, on my own. You see different places different. and culture and yeah. stuff. Yeah, like and I wander down to the, yeah. do the sound check, wander back on my own. You know, grab a bite to eat somewhere, wander back down, do the gig, wander back again. You know, and and then tomorrow we'll travel again. Again. Yeah. You know, and we'll sit and we'll talk shite in the van for. Mm. You know, three hours or four hours or whatever long it's going to be, and then we'll stop, and then I'll just be the same again. That's know? the life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, thanks very much, but I really don't want to go and have dinner with your mother or your father. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. You know, it's it's yeah. all very it's all very nice, but I'm, I think you get older, you get more grumpy, and you just want yeah. you want your own space. I just need my own space, and that's yeah. what I do. Yeah. And everybody respects that, and I respect that. You know of Michael and of everybody else as well, and uh, you know so that works, so that you're not you're not locking horns. Oh, look, you know so so it just keeps it it keeps the peace. Yeah. You know, and we're only so long as that 90 minutes on stage. That's the most important thing. Or, or in the case of the Schenker Fest, at two and a half to three hours. That's the most important part. Yeah. And we're all part and friendly of that. But I don't want to go shopping with you when we've got a day off, you yeah, know. Yeah, when we pull up at a shopping yeah, mall, I, understand. I don't want to go, where are you going? I'm going over there. Can I come with you? Oh, if you must, you know. And then you make your excuses and leave. So that's, that's just how that's it is. That's how it is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. No, I'm yeah. glad.